Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a work for day for you. <laughs> Ugh. A work day for you that I did in 2020. Uh, this is a work day I did probably like in December. I was trying to get this job done before Christmas came and this, it was kind of like a lot. So I didn't have time to edit it, but I wanted to edit it now because in this video, you're gonna kind of get a glimpse of why quilting is very beautiful in the sense of it creates an inheritance for people. And this quilt is also one of you subscribers. This is your quilt that you sent to me. And I thought this video was important to document. So this is how we're gonna start. The client sent me two small, medium, small, they're pretty small. They could be used for babies, um, little quilts that I believe, and I'm not sure that this client got a large quilt and turned them into several small quilts. And what she did is she turned it into a smaller quilt and then put kind of like a rainbow border on it, but it was not rainbow colors kind of, and then put another white border to make the quilt a little bit bigger. And so she sent me two of them and I started quilting them for her. And so here you can see how the quilting kind of went along. I want you to see the quilting on this thing. Look how beautiful. I think sometimes just white, beautiful quilting on a white quilt just like makes this thing pop. It's an antique quilt. I have to do like a couple of these. These are from one of the subscribers. So this is what the quilting looks like on the top. Quilting is beautiful. this a Madonna song <laughs> in my head uh, my lucky star my heavenly body tonight do, 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 do. Uh, uh, uh. okay let me move on I have a whole bunch of little ladybugs in front of the building look I have a ladybug on my hand right there oh oh don't fly I'm gonna put her outside, but she just came in. They were all over my door. Isn't that neat? Well, kind of, I guess. Ladybugs. She wants me to um, quilt these borders. So this is the border. This is to just holding the border. And this is the border. And this is small quilt small I'm gonna put it on here and what I'm gonna try to do with this is make sure that um, these can't shrink at all <laughs> she only gave me the exact measurements so she could put it on the original quilt so she sent me, I think, two more small quilts with the borders already completely done, like a whole quilt. And then she sent me just borders. She sent me a top and bottom and a right and left border for a smaller quilt and a top and bottom and a right and left for a larger quilt. Now what she did is she measured the exact size of what the borders had to be and the exact measurement of what the top and bottom borders needed to be for each individual quilt. And so you're gonna see pictures of the hand quilting that she did. And for you to add borders or more borders to something that you've already quilted to make it bigger, one of the things I recommend is that whatever quilting that is on the center of the quilt top that it did not go over to the edge completely. So I believe that she had a lot of room on the edge to where she could fold it over and then sew the border that she created on top of it. 
Now this was a unique job because I have never done anything like this and it was kind of smart how she thought this through. It was kind of genius, you know, kind of genius. So this is a picture of the quilted quilt top right there. She did the border and the right border and left border and then she got strips of fabric on the bottom and on the top. What she did is she added on the top border and the bottom border about another inch taking into consideration the one-fourth that she's going to lose from the top and the one-fourth that she's going to lose from the border and she also did that so that's what she added here to be able to add to her top borders let me show you also another example on how you can do this do you see this little picture you can measure the center of your quilt top and your top border needs to line up to your quilt top and this border needs to line up now here, you can make a longer right and left borders, but you have to make sure that you add an inch because you're gonna lose a half inch here and a half inch here. Now, it's just preference, and I don't think it mattered when she put it together. Be mindful on your seam allowances. Now what my client did is she put the top and bottom borders together using a green, green, green strip of fabric and then she put the left and right borders together using another green strip of fabric and then she labeled them large or and then she also did this with another set of quilt another quilt and she labeled them smart small smart <laughs> when she did this you have to be mindful of when you're quilting it the quilt shrinking in yeah the quilt shrinking in a bit and either way if it shrinks in you have to make sure that you don't quilt it too much to where you shrink in too much that it's not the exact size of the border for your center quilt top I ended up counseling her and telling her let's try a kind of not so quilted de design that it gives me the ability to go all the way across that border, the top and bottom, or the right and left, whichever I started working on, and make sure that it didn't take in too much to where it wasn't gonna fit her quilt top. Yeah, that was a thing. This has been an act of creative genius. <laughs> I look crazy, because I've tried different designs and then trying to figure this out. I realized when I measured it that it came in that it came in half an inch, which was not horrible. Thank God we didn't get a very dense quilting design because the more quilting you put on a piece of material, the more it shrinks in. And the less quilting, the less the shrinkage. So that's the thing. Okay, so I'm measuring a half inch here. a half inch on the right side and the left side and a half inch for the bottom of the edge of the border. And the reason I did that is if she needed to trim it, she had some trimming space and also too, she was able to put that binding on to where it didn't infringe on the border quilting design. So I made sure I quilted right to the edge of that color strip that she put and kind of shrunk it in to the border markings that I made. And so when she had it, she had about a half inch to fiddle with it when she's putting the other border. And the reason is, is when she sews it together, um, hopefully if it fits perfectly, the she'll have like a little tiny gap when she puts the piecing, the quilt together, and that's where the end of the design will end. Or if she needs that extra space, um, she can kind of move the material. So one of the things about working for clients that are out of state, you really don't know if what you did worked. You don't know. You're hoping that you did a successful job for them, but now it was her turn to go ahead and get those borders and sew them on the quilted, hand piece quilted center top. Now, I also had to find a design that kind of went 
in line with her hand piecing. That was a thing too, finding a design. And I found this beautiful and bright design and it just looked gorgeous. It was beautiful. And when she took it, it was so neat how she sewed, she folded the quilt top. She had the edge of the quilt top and the edge of the border that I put on for her. She went ahead and sewed the quilt top and the batting and also the quilt top and the batting of the border. And you can see a picture of how she did that. What ends up happening, it's the back fabric of the quilt top that was hand piece and the back fabric of the border, they're now loose flaps. I recommend you hand sew it, but she's so good and she's so smart. She aligned it to the seam of where the quilt top and the quilt border seam together. She aligned and folded it in and pinned it and then just sewed down that seam and locked that seam in and no one would know that she did any of that. I would hand stitch it down so that it would look like a nice clean seam and hand stitch the back fabric to the batting so that it's all locked in together, but she chose to sew it. And let me just show you how beautiful this came together. I've never done a job like this to where I worked on the borders and separately from the center of the top but this was a neat experience. Now I wanted to share why this client did this. This is a quilt I believe that her grandma quilted and she had had it on display. I saw it on a bed and she decided that she was going to kind of make it as a gift to I believe her children and grandchildren. And you could see these pictures, picture of the quilt top, the person who created it, um, the history kind of behind this quilt top and put it in these precious little boxes and gave them away as gifts. Now, there's something beautiful about sharing something that's someone in your life that you experienced and loved and loved you and sharing it with your children. I just think it's the treasure. 